Good morning, folks. I'm inside. The wife and the kids have left, so I snuck inside out of my shop, out of my lair. But uh, I thought I'd do a video about um, some of the things that I appreciate in life, I guess. Um, I just wanted to share one of the passions that I have in life. Um, and hopefully once I get my machine back, back up and running, I'll um, have some videos and some projects to share with you guys. But I thought in the interim I could share some of the things I've done in the past and maybe talk a little bit about where I got the bug um, for doing woodwork. Um, and I'll use that term loosely. I, it's just, I just have a hobby um, and it happens to involve wood as the media or the medium, whatever the case may be. But, um, boy, I don't know what the very first thing was that I made, but it, I'm sure it was something for mom. Um, I know one of the things I made a long, long time ago was it was just a simple plaque. I think she still got it, but it's, it's just a simple piece of wood. And I drew a symbol of, oh, Christ or something, something like that on there. Um, and she, I, I don't know if she still got it or not, but um, she had it for some time. And not only do you get the joy of giving um, somebody something like that, when you see it displayed, um, you get to be rejoiced over and over again, if that makes any sense. Um, so I was young when I did that. And as I grew older, I always would craft stuff and make stuff on my own. I carved... Uh, beads from wood at one time. Um, I used to make a lot of necklaces and bracelets and stuff out of cord and whatnot. Uh, I've always enjoyed stick carving and that was one thing that um, actually I turned into gifts one year for my brothers um, and nephews and whatnot. We, I made them all, um, you know, unique custom walking sticks. Um, and that was a fun one to give them. I doubt they used them much at all, but I, there was a time when they did use them when we, we would go camping or whatever. I, and, and then, you know, again, you're reminded that, uh, you know, that's something you created for, for them uniquely. Um, I've always enjoyed making stuff for the ones I love. Um, and when I became serious with my wife, Julia, and I w it was very clear that I loved her and everything. Um, one time I was just looking for something to make, I think. I don't even think it was a special holiday. It may have been. I don't recall, but I wanted to make her something, and I had nothing but some basswood um, from some carving projects that I had started and failed at and whatnot. I was learning how to do lathe work and learning how to hand carve at the time. And I made Julia this box, a uh, little, it's not a box, it's, I'm looking at it now and I'll show you here in a second. But what it is, is it was two pieces of wood, um, a base and a top, and they fit together in a little cove. And it was really, really simple. The hardest part was carving the heart and taking all the wood off. But I was new at doing this and... Um, I had a lot of ambition, but let me go ahead and uh, I'm going to pause right here and I'll tilt the camera down and show you guys what it looks like. Okay, so here it is. Uh, like I said, this was literally, it was it was actually, I believe, one piece altogether. Um, I could be wrong about that, but I'm, I'm looking at it like this and I think this is how it was roughly. Maybe, maybe not, but anyhow, I cut the base out and excuse me, that's not true. I cut the heart out and I started carving the heart. That's what I did first. And it really isn't that intricate at all. It's got some uh, interesting um, texture, not texture, but uh, it, it has a pleasant feel and shape. It's very smooth. It's pleasant to hold in your hand and whatnot. But what I did, which I thought was kind of cool, was I made it fit and balance right in uh, 
let's see, because if it, it goes one way, and if I got it the wrong way, there, there it is. <laughs> and it just balances like that. Um, it's relatively stable like this. And I think you saw when I had it the other way, it doesn't, uh, it just doesn't stand. So it's kind of cool. You got to make sure you get it that way and stand it. It was a fun gift to give because it, it, um, I, I just like the way that if you didn't know which way it fit, you would think it just doesn't work or doesn't stand. But if you flip it the right way, it, it works and it stands and stuff. And I thought that was kind of fun, kind of cute. But um, I've always made stuff for my wife. I think probably every year I make her something. Um, I'm looking around the house now and we've got quite a few. But um, So that was hand carving and I did that for some time. And I would just make little things for the house. Um, I made a um, ice cream spoon, like ice cream scooper. Um, I'm trying to think what else because it was some time ago. Handles for a couple tools I made, you know, like that. I did carvings like this and I did spoons, made some spatulas and ladles and stuff I, I hand carved. And at, at every turn when I would do these projects, I would try to find local wood. And by local, I mean right out of the yard, hopefully. And if it couldn't be out of the yard, maybe from a significant um, event that happened, um, you know, like a maybe a bad storm and a lightning took down a tree, you know, I wouldn't try to make something out of that wood from that tree and give it to the person that, you know, maybe cut cut up the wood or cleaned up the mess or or give it to the person's house that it fell on, you know. Um, there was a guy who did some work on our tractor and I <clears throat> harvested some cedar from our property and while doing so, I used the tractor. So when the gentleman gave me a really good deal and helped me out at, at John Deere, the next time I came back, I had a present for him and it was a, um, I'll, I'll maybe put it in the reel here of, of stuff. Um, but it was a bottle opener and it was made out of cedar that the cedar that that tractor harvested. So when I gave it to him, I told him that I said, you know, this is, um, this cedar was harvested from my property was harvested with the tractor you're working on. You know, um, I wanted you to have it as a, you know, just a gift of appreciation and, uh, let the connection be, that it's, uh, you know, the tractor and it, you know, whatever. But it, when, when, when the person takes ownership of that, it gives them something to tell the story to. Yeah. You know, where the heck did you get that? Oh, this? Yeah. Uh, well, a guy cut down a tree and then I worked on his tractor and he made this, uh, you know, it just, it's a little more interesting. And, and to me, it completes a circle of, uh, of something, you know, I hate to be corny like that, but that's kind of how I see some stuff. I think in most encounters, people try to go out of the way a little bit to help each other. Um, I like to think that people aren't trying to stab each other in the back. And, uh, you know, in this case, this guy really took care of us. Saved, I'll tell you what, he saved me um, about $23,000. So that's a lot of money he saved me. Um, but why don't I do this? I'll go around and I'll gather up some of the other things. No, let me pause here before I do that. Um, so I did the carving and whatnot for some time. And in doing so, I came across... How did it go? Um, trying to recall how... Oh, I was... I got into making signs. Um... There was this gentleman on YouTube and him and his father would hand carve signs with a router, a mini router. Um, and it was really fun and really, really simple. Um, you would just either draw your pattern on the wood or uh, stencil it on. Or um, some people used like uh, templates and would spray paint an image on that they could follow whatever the case may be, and then you would take your mini router and just go over that uh, that illustration or that template, and you would be left with a depression, a groove. And then you go and you spray paint, 
and your paint gets into that groove and then you sand the surface of the wood and get it to its luster but you're left with all the paint in the grooves and it was a real simple way to create signs it's way it's the way signs have been created actually for hundreds of years um but before machinery they would chisel in these depressions and put in uh you know, white paint or charcoal or whatever the case may be to make the letters stand out. So I got into that. It was a lot of fun. And in doing so, I learned there was a whole community out there of sign making and flag making. And um, it really intrigued me. So I bought a machine, which is called the Shape, shape Oko, and it's spelled nearly how it sounds. The word shape and then O-K-O. And it's all one word, Shepoko. Um, and it's a machine that allows you to take your mini router, put it into a carousel of sorts. And this carousel moves in any direction on a on the plane that it's it's above. So it can move forward, backward, you know, at di diagonally, up and down, all above that plane, you know, say your table and it's linked to your computer so you can put in really intricate patterns and really intricate designs and this machine will go through and cut those and it, you can use different bits um, you can do, do 3d type of work um, it, it, you know the the possibilities are nearly endless and so once i got into that some of my stuff i thought got really good some of my woodworking got really nice. I mean, you have the added advantage of a machine doing so much of the work for you. Um, it kind of lets you be creative and put more emphasis on the creation of the piece versus um, really hacking away at, at, at a wood, a piece of wood, you know. Um, and I've done them both, so, you know, say what you will about it. Um, they're both uniquely challenging and they're both uniquely uh, great in their own way, in my opinion. So, so I got into that and that's, it's only been about two and a half years and it's ebbed and flowed. Um, you know, I've had machine failures. Um, I've had large, steep learning curve. Um, but it, it continues to intrigue me and I, I continue to get better and better at the stuff I make right now. I need to upgrade my laptop. Um, it crashes anytime I try to use that machine and the software. It's just, you know, the laptop is 10, 11 years old. I think, yeah, 12 years old. We got it in 2010. So it's, it's long ago obsolete. Um, but when I do, I'll get back into these projects and I, I can't wait to show you folks. But what I'll do now, now that I'm done yapping, I'll go grab a few of these pieces and maybe some old videos and photos and I'll put them together and uh, just show you some of the work that I've done. And, um, you know, I, I hope your folks enjoy checking it out because uh, once, like I said, once I do get it, the machine squared away again, I'll be back in there and uh, I got some great stuff planned. Um, nothing that's not been done before. It probably you could Google a lot of these projects and have similar uh, results to what I'm, but it's going to be new to me and challenging to me. So I'll share it with you when the time comes, but okay. Thanks folks. This here is um, a gift I made for Julia for our anniversary. And what it is, is um, the song over the rainbow. And it's sung by, um, I'm not even going to try to say it. It's Israel, and I always mess it up, but he's, everyone probably has heard this song before. So it's all the lyrics, um, but also it's this uh, code here. I think it's called the QR code. And when you scan this, with your, when you take your photo and you scan the QR code, it takes you to a YouTube video of this song. So the wood was actually, I bought this at Lowe's. It was a, in the craft section. It's just, it was a pre-cut uh, live edge type board. But the, um, the cut was done on my CNC machine.
this Shapoko that I talked about, and then the painting I just did myself. And what I was talking about earlier, what you do with something like this is you spray the black on and it goes in all the little holes. And then you come back and you sand the top off and it takes off the black paint, but it leaves it in all the little holes. So I did that the same thing with the white and then the color, which was the trickiest. I went and um, just sprayed stripes of different colors like this. And it looked like crap. And I'm like, this is gonna look like crap. But once it dried and I sanded, it just looked, it looked great, so. But you may be able to pause and scan the QR code from this video and, and go to the YouTube video and hear the song, but I'm not sure. So. In person, you can do that, but through your video, I'm just not sure if you could do that. Okay, now this one is what you would call a 3D um, cut on my shape on my shape Oko machine. I'm just gonna say C and C machine. But if you notice, it's um, you look at it at a side. It's it's wavy, and it's wavy in two directions. So it's it's three dimensional. It's actually two and a half dimensional, I guess is what you would call it, because the back is flat. Um, but it, it was something I was trying new, and um, I thought it came out pretty sharp. The only thing I didn't really care for were the stars, but, um, you know, it was a learning process. And, and it's a heavy, it's a heavy uh, piece. It's, oh, it was two pieces of three quarter that I milled down, so... And there's another look down the surface, and you can see how it's wavy. But I make a lot of flags. For one thing, I've always appreciated the beauty of the American flag. I, it's a to me, it's 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 a symbol of what a great nation. You know, there's a it's a symbol of a lot of things, but um, I hold it near and dear. We'll just say that. So. Let me go round up a couple of the other ones that I made. I think you folks will enjoy to see. Okay, now this one was a gift really to the family. Um, it's a poem. And my kids do this often. They're always in the back, climb around in the forest. And, and I have a daughter and a younger son, as well as a much, much, much older son. But in this representation, it was my two younger children and it was the daughter lifting the son up to the tree branch, which is something my wife and I have witnessed countless times. As a big sister, she's always boosting up the little brother, you know, but it's a really great poem. Um, I think I'm out of focus, but it's called Trees by Joyce Kilmer and um, it again is made from the cedar off the property. Um, the same cedar that I was referring to when I was talking about the gentleman with the John Deere. What this was, was the cedar's root ball. I just sliced it in half and made some boards out of it. And this was one of the gifts I made. The other one was a gift I made from my mother. This is a rough image of the Last Supper. Um, the actual image was much more detailed and um, much more elaborate, but I couldn't quite work that into my uh, my woodcutting process. I kept failing at it. It took me four tries to get this. Um, and it's a very thick piece of sycamore that I, um, I cut down the sycamore this summer. It was actually dead and I just cut down the dead tree. And this was what I made out of uh, some of it. As I said before, I like to try to make my own boards, but it came out pretty cool. Um, it was, again, a learning process. This was um, a project that I tried and failed many, many times. It took me about six months to get it even to this good. And, you know, I wasn't 100% satisfied with it, but you know, um, I, I really love filling the house with um, handmade stuff. I know my wife appreciates it as well. She makes handmade stuff from time to time. So. 
so yeah that's that's some of the stuff I like to really do when I um, when I have the time and when the machine's working um, what I thought I, I, I'm not 100% sure on how I'm gonna end this one I may end it with some uh, clips of some of my other work but almost everything I uploaded to Facebook and I just um, I deleted the originals I you know so I'm gonna if I can't do that I'll just post the link to my um, my Facebook page it's called squid wood squid dash wood um, I was in the Navy and a friend of mine always would call me squid obviously and uh, wood for obviously wood but uh so we'll see how that goes but thanks again for viewing this and uh we'll talk to you later